Hey everyone, it's Karen with the Us Please Paper Crafts. So this video is part of the Let's Get Organized YouTube Hop for Paper Crafters, where each month we take a different item or area in our craft room and we share tips and ideas on how we store and organize those items. So for the month of July, we're going to be talking about paper or flat embellishments. So things like die cuts, ephemera, chipboard, stickers, just anything that we have that's made from paper that's flat. Um, everyone's going to be sharing those types of items in their craft room. So I have a lot of different ways that I store this type of embellishment. And so I'm going to talk about uh, a lot of different things, I guess. I'm going to show you all a lot of different ways that you can store this. So I'm hoping that you all get some ideas for some of the things that I do. And then also keep in mind, I did move this past year. It was uh, almost a year ago. And I'm still trying to go through the process of trying to figure out where things are going to go in my new craft room. And so um, I'm in the process of going through and reorganizing a lot of these embellishments. And I did go and uh, take all of these flat embellishments like stickers and die cuts and chipboard. And I categorized it first by manufacturer and collection. And I'm going to take all of those things that I found that were floating around in my craft room. And I'm going to try to match it up with the collection that I have if I have a a collection that has 12 by 12 paper. I'm going to try to put those things in with that collection. And I have a video on my YouTube channel where I shared how I store my scrapbooking collections. And I'll put a link to that video in the description below. Uh, but I'm going to store everything that's part of that collection together with the collection, except if it's a very dimensional item like washi tape. And uh, with washi tape, I have a separate place where I store the washi tape and then I just make a little reference card that I can stick in with the collection. So if you have something that's super dimensional uh, that goes with the collection, you could try to take a picture of it or do some kind of representation of that item and store it in a different area in your craft room. And so that's what I'm going to be doing for my scrapbooking collections. Okay, so then uh, anything that's not a scrapbooking collection, if it's um, a holiday, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, 4th of July, I'm going to store those together in my scrap rack. And I'll talk a little bit more about the scrap rack and what I ended up doing with that a little bit later in this video. But for anything that is a seasonal item that is a holiday, I'm going to be storing that all together in the scrap rack. Okay, and then uh, the next thing that we have is things that are by category. And um, this bin right here, I like to use these flip bins you could also use something like a scrap rack to do this as well. And um, I would uh, have this kind of a thing for categories or themes. And in my case, I have themes like pets and travel. And I think that what themes you have and what categories you might use in your craft room would depend on what types of things that you scrapbook. And so um, I do have a list of all my categories and themes that I use, and I'll put it... Um, probably somewhere, I don't know if I could put it in the description of the video because it's probably going to be too long, uh, but maybe I will put it in my Facebook group. So I do have a Facebook group for organization. It's called uh, Craft Room Organization with Yes Please Paper Crafts. If you want to join that group, I'll have a link to where you can find that Facebook group in the description below. I'll put all my uh, current categories and themes and the way that I organize things in that, um, in that group. Um, and uh, if you want to go check that out, you can go and look there. Okay, so when you have things in a, in a bin like this, it's really, it's really cool because I call this a flip bin because if you have things in a bin organized this way, then you can flip through it to find things. And I just love having things stored this way because I think it's really easy to look through it. It's really easy to grab what you want and uh, use it and then put it back. And so I really love having things in bins like this. So one of the other advantages to having a bin like this is you can have things that are all different shapes and sizes in your, in your bin, and they can all live together like this. And it makes it really easy uh, to fit a whole bunch of odd different sized items into one place, one storage solution. And uh, so you can see here that I have small items like this. We have larger items, even larger items like this. So um, it's really awesome. I can also store things that are more dimensional, like a sticker book here. I have a whole sticker book in, in this bin. And so it's a really good way to keep things that are odd sizes. I do keep things in the original packaging for the most part, but then there are some types of items that I like to repackage into different pockets. And so one of those things is 
die cuts. So if I have die cuts or ephemera like this, it's a lot of loose little bitty pieces. It's really difficult sometimes to keep it stored in the original manufacturer's packaging like this. A lot of times these plastic bags will rip and tear over time and then your items will start to fall out. Also, it's difficult to get stuff out because you have to um, pull this sticky strip down and as you're taking things in and out, things get stuck to that uh, adhesive. So I like to use these pockets. This is a five by five CD DVD sleeve. I picked these up from Amazon. I usually put a piece of white cardstock in there just to give it a little bit more uh, shape and it just makes it sit a little bit flatter. And then I just put all of my die cuts in here. So here's another example of that pocket. And then if I have larger items, I do sometimes use a five by seven sleeve like this one here. And these are the same uh, pockets or sleeves that I use for my stamp and die storage. And so uh, this, I have some larger uh, cut aparts that are in here and that would not fit in the five by five. So I would put it into this bigger pocket or sleeve. And these have flaps, so you can just take the flap and tuck it behind that piece of cardstock and it keeps everything secure so nothing will fall out. So um, let me go ahead and show you all the different products that I have here and I'll put links to where you can find these in the description below. Uh, all of this came from Amazon. So this is the uh, DVD CD sleeves and you get a hundred in a pack and this brand is Max Tech. And so uh, these really are awesome and you can use these for most of your dye ephemera uh, that, the, uh, that come from the different manufacturers like Echo Park and uh, Photo Play and places like that. Now the bigger doodle bug uh, ephemera um, their ephemera is, can be quite large, and so I either use the 5x7 pockets or sleeves, which is this right here. This doesn't have the manufacturer's name on there, but this is a 5x7, and I can't remember. I think it's called Media Pro, but I'll have links to where you can find all this in the description below. But this is also another um, DVD sleeve, just a bigger one. And then I found uh, these over on Amazon as well. Now they, ha they have these, these are plastic envelopes. And the ones that I picked up have Velcro, but you can also find the ones that have the snaps. I just thought the Velcro is a little bit easier to get in and out of. And then also it's a little bit less bulkier than the snaps that they have. But you can uh, find these on Amazon in all different sizes. And I think this one is a about a five by seven it's five and a half by seven and a half it looks like and uh so that's what i have this doodle bug ephemera stored in and it's really convenient to be able to um, put your larger ephemera in these plastic pockets and uh, these are a little bit bulkier though than using the ones like this so depending on the type of item that you're trying to store you can either use a flatter uh, DVD sleeve like this or the larger pockets and then they also have bigger pockets they have smaller pockets and they have larger pockets they have all different sizes which is really cool you know so um, I think this is a really awesome way to store your larger ephemera so I keep these paper embellishments in different areas of my craft room and I have these bins that are in my calyx unit and I'll put a picture up here so where you can see that on my uh, in my craft room but I also have a cart. It's an embellishment cart. It's the Hudson cart from Michaels. It has three tiers. And I do have a video where I shared all of the different things that I have in this cart. Put a link to where you can find that other video in the description below. But I'll just go ahead and show you all a little bit of the things that I have stored in here so that you can uh, see. But these are stored by type. Uh, so in addition to storing things by manufacturer collection, and also storing things by categories and themes. I also store things by type because sometimes there's just things that uh, they don't really have a particular theme. Um, and, and so I do store them just together. So this is all my chipboards. So all of these things here are chipboard. It has chipboard words and just other like little things. And then behind that, I have some words, uh, all different kinds of words and phrases. These are all flat stickers. We have just all kinds of things that are flat. And then behind that, I have some wood veneer. So this is all just larger wood veneer. I do have wood veneer stored in one of my Alex door units, all the little bits and pieces. 
and I have a video on how I do my wood veneer, but these are, are mainly larger, like uh, almost packaged like stickers. So I store these type of items in this bin. And this bin is one of the bins that I have sitting on the top level of my embellishment cart. So that is one of the things that I do is to store things by the type of embellishment. And then the next bin that I have in my embellishment cart is this one here. And this one I have enamel dots. So it's all different enamel dots, mostly Jean Marie designs enamel dots. Her enamel dots are awesome. <laughs> and then back here I have photo corners. Uh, so these are all just things that are stored by the type of embellishment. Okay, and then the next bin that I have here are, these are just miscellaneous stickers and mostly dimensional stickers. So I have Doodle Pops up here in the front, which are from uh, Doodle Bug. And most of these, I don't have collections that go with these. Uh, these were uh, some that I got into, uh, I think I bought a mystery box from Joann's online. It was Doodle Pop mystery box. And it was just a fun thing to get. And so I have all these little Doodle Pop, which are three dimensional embellishments. And then behind that, I have stickers from Hobby Lobby and um, Michaels and just different places like that. These are things that are not by manufacturer or collection and they're not themed. So all of these types of stickers that are three dimensional, I just have them here where I can flip through uh, this bin and just look and see what all I have. And so it's a really cool way to store your embellishments is in these flip bins. <laughs> I love storing them like this. And in the back here, I just have some uh, Dollar Tree stickers. These are flat stickers. And I have those in the back there. So these are not these are not in any kind of a category of theme. They're just generic stickers. So I just have those in a bin. And when I want to uh, add something to a layout, I could flip through there and see if there's anything that I would like to add. And next to that, I have a whole bunch of sticker books. So these books right here live in the top shelf of my um, embellishment cart. So I have all of those. And uh, all of these things that I just shared with you are all things that are on the top level of my embellishment cart. Okay, so on the second level of my embellishment cart, I have things by type. So in the front here, I have flowers. So these are all just different kinds of flowers and uh, just different flowers. And then behind that, I have butterflies and any kind of flying. So butterflies, birds, anything like that. Um, we'll live back here in this section back here. So um, just flowers and butterflies. So it's kind of like having little categories of things. And this is the kind of stuff, generic stuff that you could put on practically any layout. Uh, so if I'm just looking for something extra to put on a layout, you know, I like to have this embellishment cart. I can just roll it over to my workspace and um, I have all of this accessible and to look through as I'm working on a project. Okay, in the next bin we have puffies. <laughs> so this is any kind of puffy and dimensional. These are kind of puffy stickers from the Dollar Tree. So I have all of these dimensional stickers like this. And so those are all in here together. They have all kinds of different puffies just in here, just random stuff. <laughs> so if I'm looking for something like that to add to a project, I have all of this in here as well. So this is more just uh, puffy or um, those kind of different uh, stickers. And I have all of that in the bin. And one of the things really cool about having the embellishment cart and then having these bins inside the embellishment carts is I can pull the whole bin out and just dig through it. And it makes it really convenient and easy to be able to access this. I can leave it in the cart and look through it, but I can also just take these out of the cart and um, be able to uh, look through it that way. Okay, so the next bin, the last bin that I have on the second row is this one here. In the front, I have all bows. So these are all bows and three-dimensional bows, fabric bows. Just random, and that's some tassels, so just random bows. And then behind that, I have uh, hearts. So these are just hearts that could go in any type of project. Some hearts from the Dollar Tree, and then some more hearts. So lots of hearts. And then in the back here, I have some stars. Okay, so I have these by type. So it's bows, hearts, and stars in this bin. Now I do have some acrylic drawers where I keep some hearts, stars, and bows in this type of, of thing. I'm gonna show you that in a minute as soon as we wrap up the embellishment cart. Uh, but in, I do have 
things stored in different ways in different places in my craft room. It took me a long time to get to the place where I was okay with that. Um, for a long time, I wanted to have everything that was the same in one place. Well, that can be a little bit of a challenge to do because you might have things that are loose uh, in your craft room, like just a single bow. Uh, you might have things that are in larger packages and smaller packages. Um, so I have gotten, kind of gotten away from having everything stored the same way in the same place in my craft room. And now I store it how I use it. So uh, I have to think about how I work and how I work on a project and how I would go about looking for something to put on my project. And so I store things in my craft room so that it's easy for me to work on things and to find things when I'm looking for them. And uh, so I have, I'm okay with storing things in different places in my craft room. So even though I have bows in here, I have bows in another place, as long as I know that I have the, those two places, I think it's okay as long as you have a home for something and you know where it is, it's okay to have different places where you store the same types of items. So um, I'm finally coming to the realization that I don't have to have everything stored in the same place in the same way. <laughs> that took me a long time. <laughs> okay, so in the bottom of this embellishment card, I have some of all kinds of different uh, photo overlays here and just different things like that. These are acetate pieces and just different really cool things that you can use on a layout and these are like pockets so all kinds of different uh, um, I don't know what you call these I guess they're overlays and then behind that I have frames so all of these are just different frames and then back here I just have some miscellaneous items this, these are some rub-ons and then this is uh, some little stickers that you can use to make epoxy flare Okay, back there in the back. <laughs> okay, so that's that bin. Okay, and then the other items that I have stored on the bottom of my embellishment cart are all tags. Uh, so these are tags that are just different tags that I had um, from different places, and I just put them all here. So all of these are just all different tags. And so when I'm looking for a tag to use on a layout, then I have uh, that here. Okay, so these are the last two bins that I have in my embellishment cart. This one has some paper strips that are two inches because I have punches that I can use to create tags. I have two punches from Stampin' Up, one that creates a scalloped edge tag and one that creates an angled edge tag. So I can use all of the scrap paper to create tags for a project. And in this bin, I just have strips of paper that I can use when I am working on a project. I usually use these strips of papers on cards or to just um, mat some small embellishment. So I have all of the scrap paper uh, just in the bottom of my embellishment cart. So another place that I have embellishments stored in my craft room are in some drawer units. And so I have two different types of drawer units here. I'm gonna show y'all a picture of what this looks like in my craft room. I have 12 of these drawers, and it's actually two drawers in each unit, and then you can stack them. These are foam deflecto. And um, what I use these for are for my color, my embellishments by color. So this is all ephemera by color. So we have the pink drawer. And one of the nice things about these drawers is they're actually a really nice size. So you can fit really large items in there. And you can actually fit quite a bit in the drawer. So I'm just gonna show you. So I have tons of different things and all of these things that are in this drawer are all pink. And so this is how you would maybe store by color. And the nice thing about having these store by color is if I'm trying to look for something that go on a project and I'm looking for a specific color like red, I can just grab this whole bin and bring it to my workspace and just dig through it and maybe find something that might work uh, for whatever project I'm working on. So we have uh, red, then orange, then yellow. So I have one for every color and then I have one for neutrals and also metallics. And um, I have those um, really accessible, it's on top of one of my tables. And so this is really awesome because uh, it's really easy to access it. And you can also just grab one of the bins and just bring it over to wherever you're working. So I love having this ephemera stored by color. And then I also have ephemera stored by type. 
And um, I had said just earlier, I showed you some bins that were in my embellishment cart where I had things stored by bows, butterflies, flowers, um, stars, and hearts. And so this is the storage that I have here for just loose butterflies. And you can see that uh, it's really an awesome way to store all your leftovers from projects. And if I wanna just add a butterfly to a layout, I could just quickly go over here and look through my butterflies. And then I also just, this is just flowers and just things that were left over from projects. So I'm storing it this way because it just makes sense. And it's just a good way to, um, to do it if you have loose items in your craft room. In this drawer, we have all the different bows. And it also gives you a way to throw things. <laughs> if you have some stuff left over from a project, you know, it gives me a place to throw them really quickly into some organization. And so here we have some three-dimensional flowers. And in this drawer, I just have all kinds of different stars. And then uh, in the top drawer, we have all different types of hearts. And this is not all of my hearts. This is not all of my stars. But it is a good way to just um, be able to, to have that. It's quick and easy access, and it lives on um, my works table. And it's really easy to access. It's really easy to throw things in there when I'm working on a project and I have leftover things. So I think it works out really well. And I have uh, four of these units, and each one of these units has three drawers. And uh, I did pick both of these things up from Amazon online. And I'll put links to where you can find these in the description below. Okay, so the last place that I have these paper embellishments stored in my craft room is in the Totally Tiffany Scrap Rack. And the Totally Tiffany Scrap Rack is a system that has a base and then it has these binders. These are like three ring binders and they have this Velcro on the back. And so you would take this and attach it onto the base and then you would be able to flip through it. So it's really a cool organization tool to use, but there's some challenges with it. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with that scrap rack. <laughs> I love how easy it is to use it, but putting it together, taking these binders on and off the base is really challenging. And so that's the part that I really don't like about it. So what would happen is that I would put everything into the scrap rack, but then over time I would never add anything because it was so darn hard to get these binders off of the base. And you can't add pages to it if the binder is attached to the base. So uh, there are some challenges with using that, but it is a really awesome organization system, I have to say. So just recently, I decided to take all of my spinders off of the base, and I eliminated those bases out of my craft room. So I had four totally different scrap rack bases, and I took them out of my craft room. And uh, I thought about how I could actually use these, still use these scrap rack pages, but not have them on the base. So one of my ideas was to create a flip bin and put these binders into a flip bin. So I purchased three large bins that I have in my closet. And I'll insert a video clip here that you can see how I have this in the closet. And right now I still have them on the binder. And one of the things I'm having a little bit of a problem with is when I put this into that bin, it slides around quite a bit. And um, these kind of, the pages kind of bow a little bit or they, they, uh, they don't stay upright. So I'm debating about whether or not I want to put Velcro into the bottom of the bin so I can make it a little bit more secure so this will just stay in position. Or I might just take all of these pages off of these binders and just put the pages into the bin and make it like my flip bins that I have that I'm storing my 12 by 12 paper. So uh, at this point, I'm not really sure what the solution is gonna be, but as soon as I finish that uh, project, and I figure out how I'm going to create those flip bins. I'll do another video and I'll share that with you. But I'm planning to put all of my uh, seasonal and holiday and themed items into these scrap rack pages. The scrap rack pages are really awesome. It's a really cool organization system. And it's really easy to flip through to be able to find things. I just wish that working with the binders was a little bit easier. <laughs> Okay, so I just took this binder out of the closet just so I can show y'all a couple of examples of how you can use the Totally Tiffany scrap wrap pages. And so this is one of the dividers and I'm using it as a cover here. This is my Halloween category. And then you have different types of pages. 
So let me go ahead and show y'all a couple of the different Totally Tiffany pages that you can get. There's all different pages that you can get. Uh, this one here has one, two, three, four, four pockets, all different sizes. So there's like a long skinny pocket here, and then a bigger pocket, and then two smaller pockets. And then you can get some that have, uh, this one here just has two pockets. So like for six by 12 items, you can use that one. Uh, here is a pack that I have. This is the straight eight storage pages. And these have eight pockets. So there's all different types of pages that you can purchase from Totally Tiffany. And then this one here has, um, this is the Fabulous Four. It has four storage pockets. So these are like a five by five, um, about that size. So you, you can purchase like all different kinds of pages. The other thing that you can get is just get some 12 by 12 uh, scrapbook page protectors. You can use those as well if you have larger items. And uh, just mix and match, you know, the, as long as it fits on a three ring binder, then you can put it into your scrap rack. You could even put uh, the eight and a half by 11 page protectors in here. Um, and all, as long as it fits in the three ring binder, then you're good to go. Okay, so we have just different items here um, in this Halloween. And then I have another, this is fall, so this is a uh, more, things here and I've actually moved recently so a lot of this stuff is just really disorganized right now so I have more Halloween and autumn uh, inspired things fall things to put in here I just haven't had a chance to do it yet uh, but once I get all of that in here it's gonna be really, really awesome so it's a really cool system to keep all of your things together to be easily um, Keep small and larger items because you can get the different pocket pages and uh, be able to store the larger 12 by 12 items with the smaller items. So that's one of the big advantages of having a scrap rack. One of the downsides of using this is that it really doesn't work well for dimensional items. So if you have puffy stickers, if you have a lot of that, it really makes your, your scrap rack bulky. So it's better to keep more of the flat items in your scrap rack. And I'm just gonna push that over here and show you another one that I have here. This is another uh, scrap rack binder that I have that's full of letters and alphas. And so you can see that you can fit a lot of things in here and be able to quickly just flip through all of these different things that you might have and uh, be able to find what you need. Now this is really old alphas. <laughs> so I have all of those alphas, but I have alphas in all different shapes and sizes. And uh, that's one of the biggest advantages I think of using the Tilly Tiffany, because if you have 12 by 12, you have six by 12 and even smaller, you can keep them all in one space. So just recently, Creative Memories came out with the storage solution that's very similar to the scrap rack pages that are from Totally Tiffany. And I just want to show those to you guys just in case you're interested in Creative Memories products. But Creative Memories products, they have these, um, it's a four pocket pages. They have the individual pages. They also have the uh, six by 12, so two pocket pages. And then the border I don't have any border ones here. Let's see. This is the uh, two and a half by 12. So this is for the, like the border strips. Let me see if I can open this one up. And then here we have the border strips. So we have um, eight pockets. They, this is like you have uh, this on both sides. So you can use both sides of these. So these are really cool. And I did purchase some of these just to try them out. I can use these in combination with the scrap rack. I think it's really awesome because it's also a three ring system. So uh, if you have the scrap rack, you can uh, definitely also use the Creative Memories pages. And uh, the Creative Memories, they don't have the um, base and the spinders. They actually have binders that you can purchase. So you can purchase a large binder and then put all these pages in there to organize all of your creative memory scrapbooking items. 
So I have to say my favorite thing about the Totally Tiffany scrap rack is the different pages that you can get with all the different pockets. And it makes it easy to be able to store things that are all different sizes into one storage solution. Anything that fits on a three ring binder would fit into the scrap rack. And uh, if you didn't want to use the three ring binders, you could just use these pages and make a flip bin. And so that is uh, two different ways that you could use the Totally Tiffany uh, scrap rack without actually having the base. So um, I just uh, think that it's really awesome. You can also get the binders from uh, Creative Memories if you wanted to do binders and or you can make your own covers. Um, I actually have uh, some stencils that I'm storing. Let me share that with you. So I repurposed one of my spinders and then I used a really old scrapbook cover. This is from Miss Elizabeth. Used to be at the Dollar Tree, you could get these. <laughs> but uh, you could probably make your own cover. Just use some chipboard and you can cover it. So I just took a spinder and then I took this cover and added that. And then I just have all of my Creative Memories templates in here. And uh, to, I can have that stored. And then I just have this in one of my Calyx units. So that's another thing that you can do. You can actually just put this into your Calyx unit or on a bookshelf and it fits there as well. And it's another way to use the spinders and the pages uh, from Totally Tiffany. So you could do that as well. So you could use the base, you could use it uh, and just put it on a bookshelf or you could put it into a binder like Creative Memories has. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you could use these different um, pages. And it's a really cool way to store your scrapbooking items. <laughs> Okay, so I think I've covered every different type of organization solution that I have in my craft room for paper embellishment storage. And I hope I've given you guys some ideas on how you can store your ephemera, stickers, and just all kinds of different paper embellishments. And y'all be sure and go check out everyone else's videos that is participating in this YouTube hop because you might get even more ideas on how you can organize your ephemera and different uh, flat embellishments. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps me to know what types of videos y'all like to watch. It also helps YouTube to know what types of videos to recommend to other viewers. And if you're, if you're not already a subscriber and you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you join my community. Okay, you guys, that's all I have. Y'all take care. Hope y'all have an awesome weekend and I hope to see you next time. Bye now. Miss Bella, how are you doing? Do you want to say hi to the YouTube people? No. <laughs> you don't want to say hi? No? Okay. Where's Lily Bell? Can Lily Bell say hi? Go get Lily Bell. Maybe she'll talk. I can't believe you're not talking to me. <laughs> you're mad? Why? Because <laughs> I've been ignoring you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you say hi to the YouTube people? They miss you. They're always asking where you are. And what else? <laughs> You're such a sweetheart. You are. Got anything else to say? Are you mad at me? You are. <laughs> I know. I've been cleaning and organizing and doing all kinds of stuff and not paying any attention to you, huh? Well, don't be mad. Maybe mom will give you something nice. You want a treat? Would you like a treat? Let me go get you a treat. Hold on.